today I'll be sharing the different streams of income that I personally rely on as a self-employed artist. It's Elle. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I am a small Filipino artist based in Bay Area, California. I know that when I first started out, I had a really difficult time navigating the business side of being an artist. So hopefully this helps you in some way, whether you're an artist like me or you're just doing freelance in general. Also, I am not speaking for every artist out there because everyone's creative journey is just so different. I'm just sharing my own experiences and what has and hasn't worked for me. Before I get started, I thought I would talk a little bit about myself and how I became an artist. I always loved creating art since I was really young and I grew up in the era of Zanga and MySpace, so I was one of those kids that customized the crap out of everything. From there, I literally spent all of my time after school either playing Neopets or designing Lizzie McGuire fan sites, which I feel like ultimately inspired me to become an artist in the first place when I was a junior in high school and I had to decide what college I wanted to go to and what I wanted to pursue. I honestly just didn't think that art was an option for me. One, because I didn't have the financial means to attend art school. It was just way out of my budget. And two, I didn't know anyone that looked like me that was working in the art field. So I didn't really have a good example to follow. So I ended up studying communications at UC Davis. And immediately after I graduated, I flew to New York for a magazine internship. And I definitely blamed 13 going on 30 and Devil Wears Prada. I watched those films so many times because I was just so inspired to live that magazine life that I saw in films and obviously it was not as glamorous as I pictured it in my head. But at the same time, I absolutely fell in love with the city. I love New York so much and this was around the time that I realized that it is possible to have a career in the arts and it's also where I learned a lot of my technical skills in graphic design thanks to my art director so I'm very very grateful for those experiences. I've had a couple of jobs since then. I did marketing design for a mobile gaming company based in San Francisco and most recently I did marketing design for Penguin Random House Publishing. So I didn't jump straight into freelance at first. I actually juggled building my brand She's L with my full-time job for a couple of years before I was able to save up enough money to fund things for my art business and to cover rent in case the things didn't pan out the way that I thought it would. So it took me a while, but I officially quit my job spring of 2020. Yes, during the peak of the pandemic, so it probably was not the best time. But at that point, I was just so burnt out from working in the corporate world for so many years. It just took a huge, huge toll on my mental health. So I left my job and I've been creating digital art online, creating products for my small business and sharing content online for the past couple years now. Of course, there's been a lot of ups and downs throughout this creative journey, but I can honestly say that this is one of the most fulfilling experiences that I've ever had. Quick disclaimer, I am not encouraging anyone to quit their job by any means. This is just my personal journey. But if you are unhappy with work, just know that it's not a permanent situation at all. And you should never ever sacrifice your mental health for any career. You're still an artist, whether you work in corporate, you do freelance, you're self-employed, or even if it's just a hobby, just do whatever makes you happy. This video is meant for people who are interested in working for themselves and building their own art business so keep watching if that's something that interests you so let's get straight into my five main streams of income as a self-employed artist this includes patreon my online shop content creation sponsorships and wholesale when you work for yourself you have to be super super flexible because it's just not ideal to put all of your eggs in one basket and rely on one source of income it's always smart to diversify your income streams and just give yourself that security 
security, especially since you're self-employed. I personally feel like there's not a lot of resources online that talk about the different streams of income that are available to self-employed artists like me. So my goal is to just be as transparent as possible. One of my online friends, Marlene Vega, actually inspired me to do this video in the first place. She's always been so open on Instagram about her monthly income as a part-time artist and I've just always admired her for that. There's also a couple of YouTube videos that I've come across by Paloma the Peach and Kelsey Rodriguez that I found super helpful so make sure to check out their videos as well. My primary source of monthly income comes from Patreon which I've had for a little over a year now and one of my goals last year as an artist was to be more consistent when it comes to creating art and I feel like Patreon has helped me grow so much as an artist because I'm actively creating new art every single month. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a monthly subscription service where creators can offer different rewards for their community and this can range from anything digital to physical. In my case, I design exclusive vinyl stickers for my patrons and I mail it out to them every single month. So right now, I currently have four main tiers and depending on what my patrons are pledged to, they'll receive a different set of rewards. So for instance, my highest tier is $15 a month and anyone pledged to that tier would receive three exclusive vinyl stickers sent to them in the mail and other perks like 25% off my shop. While my lowest tier is $2 a month, which doesn't include any physical rewards, but anyone pledged to this tier would receive access to my Discord community, my entire manufacturer list, and the ability to vote for sticker themes. So you really have complete freedom to choose whatever rewards you want to give your community. You just have to be super upfront about what you're able to offer. Overall, it's just a great platform for you to directly connect with your supporters and because community is so important to me, it's what I personally like to focus on. In terms of my monthly income, every month is different and the number fluctuates depending on how many patrons are currently pledged. At the moment, I have a little over 100 patrons, so I usually make anywhere between $700 to $900 a month. This alone contributes to a bulk of my shared rent, which is very expensive in the Bay Area, so I am so grateful for my patrons and I really do try my best to dedicate as much time to them. One thing to keep in mind though if you're offering physical rewards like me is that you'll have to set aside money towards things like shipping, packaging, and manufacturing. And of course, you don't have to go the manufacturing route like me. You can always make things at home. You just need the necessary tools and materials like ink and sticker paper. It just really depends. For me, I like to do manufacturing, which is definitely much more of an investment, but at the end of the day, it does save me a lot of time. And in combination with packaging material and shipping, I usually spend around $150 a month on this. My second stream of income comes from my online shop where I create things like enamel pins, prints, and clothing for my brand Chiselle. I currently sell my products using Shopify and Etsy. I personally prefer Shopify and just having my own website, so I'll probably transition fully to using Shopify at some point this year, but there's definitely a lot of pros and cons to both platforms. If this is your first time selling and you don't really have an audience, Etsy is definitely a good starting point when it comes to exposure and reaching consumers because it is a marketplace, but at the same time, there is a lot of fees, which I'll talk more about later. I actually have not had a shop update in forever, and I definitely need to work on a new collection very soon, but it's still my second biggest stream of income. And again, it changes from month to month. Some months I make $300, other months I make $900. It really just depends on whether I have new products or if I've just promoted my stuff enough. I do wanna point out that similar to Patreon, I do invest money towards maintaining my online shop for things like packaging material and of course manufacturing. There really isn't a set price for manufacturing products, so I recommend just doing some research and just comparing the different companies online. If you're curious to see what companies I specifically use to manufacture stickers and enamel pins, I do share an extensive list over on my Patreon, which you can check out. In terms of setting prices for your products, there's a lot of things that you wanna keep in mind in order to make profit. For example, it might cost $3 to manufacture an enamel pin, a couple dollars to make backing cards and packaging, 
and you also want to account for the time that you spend brainstorming and designing the actual product so taking that all into account you might price your enamel pin at $12 or $15 plus shipping it really just depends on what you think is fair at the end of the day it is your business you know your worth and you should never ever undervalue your work my third stream of income is content creation and in order to market myself as an artist and my brand I do a combination of short form content and long form content across TikTok, Instagram, and my YouTube. To be completely honest, it's not much compared to my other two streams of income, but you know, it does help out a bit and it's definitely something that I do want to grow. Let's talk about Instagram Reels first. I participate in their Reels bonus program, which basically allows creators to earn money every single month creating Reels. When Instagram first introduced Reels, I honestly had a really, really hard time transitioning from shooting static content to filming short form video content. But honestly, this is literally the only way to grow on their platform because Instagram prioritizes Reels over anything else now. So I really just had to force myself to adjust. But it is something that I do enjoy doing now. I love filming and just sharing my daily life online, whether that's my creative process or just sharing parts of my studio with everyone. Through the Reels program, I generally make anywhere between $100 to $125 a month. Again, it's not much compared to my other streams of income, but it's a great way to gain exposure, especially since the Instagram algorithm does favor Reels. On TikTok, I'm actually not a part of the creator fund because I've just heard so many mixed reviews about it, so I've kind of just been scared to try it out. But from experience, I've had a few videos on TikTok go viral, one of which was my Animal Crossing inspired enamel pins. And this was during the pandemic and it was probably the highest number of sales that I've ever gotten throughout my entire career. I think I had like 600 orders come from that viral TikTok alone within one day. So it still blows my mind whenever I think about it. So if you have a small business, I highly, highly recommend jumping on TikTok and Instagram Reels because it's just the best way to promote your art and reach a wider audience, especially if you participate in the trends. It's also just a great way to build your community and connect with other artists. That's how I personally met a lot of my online friends. Moving on to YouTube, as you know, I've been creating long form content on here for the past year and a half, and it's probably the most time consuming thing that I do every week, but I also genuinely love it because it allows me to show a different side of me and I feel like you get to know me a lot better than you would through like a 15 second TikTok. In order to monetize your videos on YouTube, you do need to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours within the past year, which I'm not gonna lie was so challenging for me, but I was able to reach that goal last May. And ever since then, I've been making between $100 to $150 solely from ad revenue. In terms of content creation, you do have to be consistent. I personally post a new YouTube video every Saturday and I try my best to post a reel or a TikTok at least three to five times a week. This does not mean that you have to be on social media 24 seven in order to be consistent. Just do what works for you and your schedule. I honestly think that just posting like once a week is a good goal to start with. You do need to have a good idea of what's trending though. So I recommend just participating in those trends whenever you can. My fourth income stream is through sponsorships, which is definitely much more lucrative compared to ad revenue. This obviously does not happen every month, but I do occasionally work with brands on sponsored content, and this could range from $300 to well over $1,000, depending on the type of content that they're looking for. Consistently posting on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube can lead to opportunities like this. So the more that you post, the more that brands will acknowledge your work and reach out to you. But if there is a company that you genuinely love and would like to 
work with. I definitely don't think it would hurt to reach out to their social media team directly and introduce yourself. If you do this, I recommend creating some sort of media kit that showcases all of your work and just neatly packages everything into a PDF so that when you email companies, they instantly know what you're about. And my fifth and final income stream comes from wholesale, which is another great way to push out your products into the real world outside of the digital space. I'm currently a part of FAIR, which is an online marketplace that connects you with shop owners from all over the world and allows you to sell your products at physical stores. I only have experience working with a couple of stores, but I was able to make about $3,000 from wholesale alone last year. It really just depends on what type of products you're selling and what your minimum order quantity is. For me, I sold my t-shirts wholesale, which was pretty expensive to produce, so the numbers are a little bit higher. If you do decide to do wholesale, a good rule of thumb is to multiply your cost of goods by two so that you can ensure that you're making 50% profit. For example, my wholesale price for t-shirts is $25 each because it usually costs me around $12 to $13 to produce and screen print every t-shirt. And then from there, shop owners will usually mark up their prices to like $38 and above in order for them to make profit. So there is a lot that goes into wholesale. The fair is super easy and straightforward. It's also a free service, so I highly recommend that you check them out if you're looking into wholesale. So those are pretty much the five main streams of income that I personally rely on as a self-employed artist. Of course, there are so many other ways to sell your art that I haven't mentioned, like tabling at conventions or doing art commissions. There are a lot of different ways that you can go about building your art business. There's not just one clear path. And again, these are just things that I've tried and that I recommend. Some other fees to keep in mind if you're a self-employed artist are art subscriptions. Since I mainly use Illustrator to design my products, I do pay about $30 a month for Adobe Creative Suite. But if you're more of a traditional artist and prefer drawing on your iPad, I know that Procreate has a one-time fee of $10. For content creation, I use Final Cut Pro to edit all of my videos, and that was about $300. It was a one-time fee, but there's so many free services like CapCut and iMovie that you can use to edit your content. You honestly do not need fancy equipment at all. You could literally use your iPhone to film all of your art content, so please do not let that discourage you from sharing your art online. Lastly, if you plan to have an online shop, I do pay about $29 a month for my Shopify plan. Etsy, on the other hand, is free, but there are a lot of transaction fees. I think it's about 6.5% for every order, and you also have to pay 20 cents per list so those are things to keep in mind. I know that there's other platforms like Squarespace too, but I haven't really looked into it, but there's a lot of options. I know that juggling all of these different things can seem a bit overwhelming at first, but there are some tips that have helped me along the way. A huge part of being self-employed is managing your time. I know it can be hard finding the motivation to be productive when your bed is literally a few feet away from your desk, but it really helps to create some sort of structure for yourself at home. I personally make daily to-do lists and I plan out my days in advance so I know exactly what I'm doing. And Notion has been such a great organization tool for this, so I use it all the time and I can't recommend it enough. Lastly, and most importantly, you are not a robot. You can't turn out content and art like that, so please remember to take care of yourself, to take breaks when you need to, prioritize mental health, because you don't want to end up feeling burnt out or spread yourself too thin, so please just do what you can. Anyway, I think that pretty much covers everything. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything and you found these tips helpful in some way, but if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. As always, if you want to see more content from me, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and I will see you in my next one. Bye everyone!